నమస్తే ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ సుస్వాగతం టు సండే ఎడిషన్ ఆఫ్ వర్డ్స్ ఆఫ్ విజ్డమ్ జ్ఞాన్ గంగా ఆన్ ఆ విరాట్ హిందుస్థాన్ సంఘం సోషల్ మీడియా ఛానల్స్ వీ ఆర్ బ్యాక్ వీ హ్యాడ్ టేకన్ అ బ్రేక్ లాస్ట్ సండే బట్ వీ ఆర్ బ్యాక్ టుడే అండ్ వీ విల్ బి హ్యావింగ్ అదర్ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ ఎపిసోడ్ విచ్ ఇస్ ఎపిసోడ్ నంబర్ వన్ ఎయిటీ టూ అండ్ టుడేస్ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ టాపిక్ ఈజ్ హౌ బాలీవుడ్ ఈస్ కరప్టింగ్ అవర్ కల్చర్ అండ్ to discuss in the next uh, 40 minutes or so we have dr subramaniam swami and we also have our guest speaker professor dheeraj sharma professor dheeraj sharma is director indian institute of management rohtak this is his second term and he, he has experience of over 20 years he has taught in numerous educational institution in europe asia north america etc Professor Sharma has a doctoral degree in business administration with a major in marketing strategy and a double minor in psychology and quantitative analysis from Louisiana Technical University, USA, Tech University, USA. He is on board and on, associated with numerous organizations. Professor Sharma has over 150 articles published and he as i told you is with the iim uh, rohtak and uh, earlier on he was with the iim amdavad uh, recently he wrote a book filme or sanskriti and our topic today revolves around this book and our topic of the show how bollywood is corrupting our culture so for the next uh, half an hour or more we will be discussing how the evil influence of bollywood is corrupting some parts of bollywood is corrupting our culture and we'll have a detailed discussion with dr swami initiating the discussion and professor dheeraj sharma giving us an insight of his book and what all he knows of what's happening in bollywood uh, i have to thank my co-host arvind chaturvedi and uh, ramesh swami and also i have to thank our technical team led by ashish shetty tejas navalgol ishwar ayer rakesh gadgi Vishal Mehta, Swami Nathan and Ajesh Nair for their background support week after week for putting this program together. Oh, with this, it is over to Dr. Subramaniam Swami to initiate today's important discussion, which many people all over the country and abroad are looking forward to. Thank yes. you. Dhanivad. Yes. Uh, thank you, Jagdish. Uh, I am too also truly uh, pleased uh, that... Uh, Professor Sharma, uh, a very distinguished uh, person in the field of uh, business administration uh, and having taught the subject and now been for quite some time uh, the director of, uh, of the IIMs in, uh, in IIM in uh, uh, Rotak. And uh, I was told uh, about eight months ago uh, when his term expired, which uh, normally leads to departure, the board of uh, directors board of governors of uh, iim actually insisted that he should continue and he was renominated to be uh, the director for another four uh, four five years so i think uh, 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 we have a, a person of uh, great scholarship and he has taken a topic which people are talking about uh, in sentences but he has done research and it's the most appropriate uh, book, in my opinion, in the present stage of our society. The topic we have, uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, the topic we have chosen, of course, is titled uh, How Bollywood, and Bollywood means essentially the Bombay Hindi uh, group, which uh, sort of sets the pace for the whole country, is corrupting our culture. So, uh, the, the question is, uh, is it so? And yes, uh, almost unanimously, people of any maturity are saying, yes, that is absolutely so. So I'll uh, begin by saying that uh, there are a number of dimensions to this corruption. And I'll mention those dimensions uh, in, in, in briefly and then hand over the microphone uh, to the Professor Sharma. So uh, first is, I would like to say, is that the heroes and heroines in our uh, uh, cinema in the past used to set standards. 
and uh, people used to imitate them for that. But over the years, we find this getting more and more vulgar, and the vulgarity is being made as legitimate. People use four-letter words in uh, polite con in polite meeting, polite conversations, in in, in serious uh, seminars, and so on. So I I think the the corruption that we are talking about is in the uh, way uh, people are now talking. They are talking in a way which, in my opinion, is vulgar. The second thing is that this vulgar is also anglicized. So we are speaking today in English, but all the cheap words in uh, English, uh, we are using English because a kind of a uh, you know a, a stopgap thing in the sense that we uh, for uh, Sanskrit was wiped out deliberately by the British, and we haven't been able to revive it. And that process is going on. But uh, English is also an international language and it's used in America, which is the number one economic country. So English is surviving not because Britain has given us something that we don't, we are not able to give up. But we think that uh, because the United States has become the world's number one economy, uh, learning English is very important. And uh, because of the various uh, the, uh, divisions in our language problems. Uh, so uh, English is presently continuing. But the uh, we are not inventors like the Americans. The Americans go on creating their own words uh, and make it as part of their English. But we uh, actually imitate what the Western, uh, where the English or the Americans use as English. And we don't invent anything in our in our country when we are using English. So in that, I find the vulgar parts of the uh, four-letter words and so on, they are being used in polite companies, in polite places. And uh, I mean, in, in, uh, you know, in distinguished uh, gatherings. So I think uh, this, this degeneration is a very serious thing. Then we see that the third thing is the nudity, sex, and so it's made for public display. I mean, it becomes uh, very common. I mean, the, the younger generation is totally corrupted by it. And we see all kinds of these things happening every day on TV. Somebody getting murdered, somebody being ripped apart uh, uh, into 37 pieces, this kind of thing. And this is all part of what we have already seen in the cinema world. So this, this public display and verbal discourse, which has become vulgarized, this is something. Like. Then finally, uh, I'd like to say, add two points more. One is that the Central Board of Film um, uh, Certification, which is supposed to uh, monitor all this and cut these uh, thing, is become highly corrupt. They are, uh, you know, people who are uh, agents who, if you give them five lakhs or twelve lakhs or fifteen lakhs, they'll give you a, a certification. And uh, it's openly talked about in Bombay. I've seen it in Bombay. People say, you know, you know this uh, film has been stopped. But now, uh, you know, there, somebody has been paid 15 lakhs and is bound to get the thing. So you're seeing what should be censored has not, is not being censored anymore. This is something which is thing. And finally, you see, uh, the, um, <clears throat> the cinema stars are now being compelled by politicians in power uh, to uh, uh, to live with them, uh, sleep with them, that kind of thing. And this pressure is we saw in the Sushant case. And in Sushant case, the, the man took it, uh, wanted to take it up for a, a particular girl uh, who was killed uh, a few days before he was uh, found dead. And uh, and then that time he decided that he was going to take this matter up and he got killed himself. So this is something which, uh, which is a very dangerous development because uh, film world is also connected to Dubai and Dubai is connected and therefore Dubai gets connected with politicians and uh, our country's uh, politics was going to be completely ruined by the bad influence of the cinema world. So over to you, uh, Professor. It's all yours, and I've uh, just given a. I mean, don't be bound by what I have said. You can say whatever you think is best, and if I've said something wrong, you can also correct me. For the opportunity, I think it's um, 
it's a very important topic and you know uh, first of all it relates directly to the field of marketing uh, because it sets the the tone for things so i started writing about all of this in 2014 my first article appeared which is still available online in 2014 on how uh, you know film actors and actresses uh, of a certain quality cannot be the ideals or the idols for uh, the youth uh, then thereafter i started writing about stereotypicality in bollywood and how it has impacted and in my book i have covered various topics on the influence of bollywood on drug usage on alcohol usage on other vices on religion on nationalism on societal well being and so on and so forth uh, so i'll illustrate this with bit of an example which i think would pique the curiosity because i started this in 2014 and lot of videos were made on this and and this is actually based on empirical data so the way we started was um after having looked at all of this as films being so influential i was doing a, a small uh, focus group interaction with youngsters in in the iim system in iim ahmedabad and i wanted to ask what were the influencing factors for the choice of dress that students would wear on a campus what they wore was it predicated on um, uh their peers their family uh movie stars their own choices individuality fashion magazines and so on and so forth so at that point in time and this is in my book too uh nearly 80% close to 80% of the people uh, of the youngsters who are between this age group of 21 and 25 in the iim system typical would rely on on the film actors attires to choose what they wore that was the beginning so when i learned that this was so influential i said let me examine this issue more deeply so what i did was i put together a team and we looked at top 50 movies and then expanded it to 100 movies of 1950s 60s 70s 80s 90s 2000 and 2010 onwards we analyzed this movies on various facets the first one being the last names of the heroes and last names of the villains and uh, last names of protagonists and so on and so forth so what was very interesting was any time the typical bollywood film the numbers are there in my book i mean i'm i'm please read the book and you'll find the exact numbers but any time that you find any, 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 one interruption is it in hindi or is it in english book uh the numbers are in english sir but the book is in hindi i deliberately ha ah, yes that's, right. yeah, that's a very hindi. important point because we have a lot of hindi uh, audience so therefore i uh, but the so book sorry. is in hindi sir so very good. Uh, so you would uh, this is my first book in hindi is my 11th book sir this is the first one in hindi um okay i deliberately wrote it in hindi um yes. just imagine sir in more than 80% of the movies the evil politician will always have a brahmin last name <laughs> in more than 78% of the of the movies the evil business person will have a vaishya last name uh, uh 84 or 85% of the movies which showed a sick person will always show a sick person as a buffoon um a muslim person will always be demonstrated as a devout uh person who is uh, a very ritualistically religious individual uh, and is very uh, is very truthful and faithful uh, faithful is very important word wafadari is a word associated so once i looked at these angles i said you know could it be that this is happening uh by chance or there is an agenda so we further tried to research on uh why this is happening so i'll answer the question why it is happening first and then i'll tell you what is happening why um, the diaspora uh in the last 20 25 years has expanded significantly 
uh, there was a small study done by my team in North American context where we saw what is the percentage of Indians who attend a typical Bollywood show if it happens, for instance, in Los Angeles or in Chicago. Uh, you will be very surprised to know that I picked up randomly five shows, only five shows. I have a small sample, I agree, but it's just trying to point out things in the right direction. Who is watching those Bollywood shows? So in a North American context, the ratio is 60-40. 60% of the people who are watching that show are non-Indians. And of that 60%, 90% um, are Pakistanis. So um, what is the rate? That is for size. So in India, if we have about 300 million people watching Hindi movies, We've got Pakistan, which has got about 270, 280 million people watching. So the first reason as to why possibly Bollywood engages in this is because there's a huge Pakistani market that they have to cater to. Second reason is in the last 20 years, the Tamil, Telugu, uh, Bengal, uh, as well as Punjabi film industry has really done exceedingly well. Now catching up very soon is Maharashtrian film industry, Marathi film industry, very strongly catching up. So your pie within India has shrunk. So what do you do for profitability? You have to look at movies which can placate or play into the hands of our neighborhood so that you could, you could make more profits, make more money. Uh, so my first uh, speculation here is that this is happening because of the market and because of the agenda, it's not happening by chance. Uh, second very important part, uh, I believe that there is evidence available uh, and we have I've written in my book uh, categorically, even uh, citing sources uh, where uh, the funding for Bollywood is very, very informal and large and significant form of funding from Bollywood uh, comes from, uh, from the Middle East. And many of those uh, financiers are nefarious elements of our society. Uh, they have an agenda. And when they push an agenda, that agenda is to break down the very backbone of Indian society. And the backbone of Indian society is our families, is our tradition, is our culture, and our respect for what is Indian. Therefore, uh, as an evidence as to how they have done this, in the last 20 years, temple has disappeared from Indian movies. If you would remember, in 1950s, 60s, and 70s, when the protagonist was in trouble, he would resort to uh, resolving that dilemma by going to a temple. Temple played a very central character. Be it Dilip Kumar in his movies going to Bhagwan and saying, hey, Bhagwan, or Amitabh Bachchan, Ab to Khush Ho Bhagwan. These are all dialogues from movies. I'm just trying to typify them. The temple played a very central role. However, in the movies of late to mid 90s onwards, temple disappeared. Temple stopped appearing. The, the protagonist, protagonist relatives would never ever visit the temple, never ever resort to God to resolve the dilemma. However, what really uh, uh, came about was 180 degree opposite. All the negative characters, particularly the so-called uh, corrupt politicians, corrupt business people would be shown having havans and wearing tilaks. The numbers are there in my book, by the way. I, I am not making this up. The numbers are available in my book as to what is the percentage of movies which, uh, which have shown. Uh, this number has grown significantly from 1980 onwards. Uh, by the way, I wrote an article in 2020 or 21 that Temple has made a comeback. Actually, in, 19, in 2020, Temple made a comeback. 1920, Temples have now started to come back in, in, uh, in Bollywood movies. Let me give you another instance. Um, how denigration of religion uh, has taken place. Uh, there used to be a typical scene in almost every Bollywood movie, again, numbers are available in my book. I have taken courtroom drama movies from 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. It was a typical scene where a person would say, Main Gita pe leta 
in that that particular scene from 90s and 2000 90s onwards has disappeared there is no oath taking on geeta anymore even in the most well watched uh, courtroom drama movies now these things just cannot happen by chance so what is uh, we have already talked about the intent the intent two fold reason one uh, because of the expanding markets in the diaspora abroad pakistani market is very attractive second uh, the the financing and third i believe uh, that uh, the the big film makers of bollywood have a very condescending attitude towards the typical indian they want to be little they 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 want to tell them as to what is right so media actually has two roles particularly the media diet one is to demonstrate what is there in society and second is to influence what is happening in society i believe uh, bollywood movies have taken the second path which means they don't wish to demonstrate what is happening in society they want to impact what is happening in society C- kindly indulge me i'll illustrate this with an example just think about this the typical journey of an indian youth who is in grade 9 10 11 12 is going to tuitions going to going to coaching centers preparing for competitive exams kindly show me one movie a major mainstream movie i'm talking about major movie done by the big stars uh, where they have talked about this strong journey most of the movies would present a utopian world where uh, the the kid has just finished 12th grade or going to college and wants to go backpacking uh, i don't know which parents are allowing that so by by giving this example i want to demonstrate that bollywood has taken the path of impacting what is happening in society and not reflecting what is what goes on in society same thing goes for um, the drug culture again there is a study available freely available and it's also in my book these studies i have spent um, one of the other expertise uh, dr swami knows is that i specialize in modernization of prisons i had collected data uh, from uh, from prison inmates in punjab uh, in in uh, in delhi in gujarat uh, jails with the jails uh, these are the jails where i had worked i had spent some time and i had advised them in modernization and it was it was extraordinary to find that what was the beginning of those drug peddlers or drug consumers who are either awaiting trials or have been convicted in these jails uh one of the primary driving elements for them is the euphoria and the sense of machismo which is characterized and presented in in our movies uh, again kindly uh, in, indulge me with an example i have spent a considerable amount of time uh you know studying abroad being a professor abroad and doing research abroad i would like to bet if people can show me even advertisements of alcohol or smoking the uh, in the way uh, you know in 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 hollywood movies as are done in uh, it's so blatantly in the in the in the bollywood movies um it is remarkable that we are actually glorifying uh, individuals uh who are indulging objectification of women again i don't know uh, it is it is surprising i do not know of um, of places where uh you know women are dressed up the way they are presented in in indian movies i do not know uh the behavior of individuals use of profanities it's in my book language uh is it, it's it's again i have a full chapter on language and bollywood influencing language uh it is remarkable to see how today stand up comedy has been directly correlated to use of profanities a person uses a profanity people start clapping so in other words we are celebrating the use of profanities uh which i don't believe any north american or western european country does so is this a deliberate direction uh that has been given by bollywood let me now come to nationalism uh we took a very very simple yardstick for nationalism is demonstration of a flag national flag in movies i took 50s 60s 70s 80s again and compared it to to hollywood movies you would be surprised numbers exact numbers are in my book in 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 hollywood movies more than 3 more than 2/3 of movies which means 66% or more i think the number would be close to 80% 80% of 
in some scene in the movie you would see the american flag fluttering it is could, could be on a building it could be on a car it could be somewhere national flag uh, plays somewhere in the background less than 12% of indian uh, bollywood movies have a flag flag has also made a comeback in last 4 or 5 years i mean flag has disappeared from uh, from from bollywood movies so why again um, uh, this disappearance uh, because it has deep and profound impact according to sociological experiments which we conducted we have done experiments to demonstrate what's the impact of this so impact of this on the youth is following one um, they they become subversive uh, the, the precondition to becoming subversive is to have lack of faith in institutions so if a judge is always demonstrated as corrupt or a buffoon kindly show me any movie where a judge is characterized as a person of a highest character very very few movies Num in recent times uh, please show me a movie where a professor professors are the ones i'm sorry uh, i'm being biased but uh, dr swami would agree professors are the ones who make and break a society uh, after first world war the rise of communism in in europe was primarily attributed to schools of thoughts which were led by professors revolutions are created by professors but how do you characterize professors so i will illustrate this with an example one movie which has had deep and profound impact on our youth about college life is called three idiots i took a sample survey amongst the students and asked them to rate which is the movie which has had the most profound impact on them which relates to a college and three idiots came out to be a number one movie three idiots is set in a so called institution called ICE or ICI which is actually IIT they want and they show that it is one of the it is the best institution for engineering in that movie so in that movie you are showing the best engineering institution in the country and the professors of that institutions do not know how to teach and the protagonist has to tell them that you don't know how to teach and everybody is laughing about it the director of the institution is a buffoon uh, i i'm i'm really perplexed that by belittling the education in the top notch institution of india what message are you trying to send to the youth you are trying to tell them that the path the traditional path of working hard respecting your teachers following the guidelines of the researchers who may not be the most savviest and the most stylish people on this planet but get the job done is a path for suckers it's not the traditional path which you should follow and you should challenge what is there and challenge without having thought so these are these are very very deep profound strong impacts which um, which have been done and there is evidence available that it has a very negative impact on the self esteem of our youth on uh, trust in authorities on objectification of you, of women violence on uh, on drug usage uh, alcohol abuse and many other outcomes well there are always multivariate equations as to why these outcomes would be influenced by multiple variables but my studies demonstrates that significant percentage of the variance in these outcome variables is explained by the movies that individuals watch rising materialism objectification of women drug usage violence anti nationalism subversion self esteem are some of the major outcome variables which have come out of these uh, negative uh, casting stereotypicality projections subliminal stimuli which has been portrayed in the bollywood movies particularly in the last 30 years more so than before Okay, so you can go ahead now. Your mic's unmuted. <coughs> you're muted, Doctor Swami. Your microphone has been turned off. Doctor Swami, you have to turn on your microphone. Doctor Swami, can you please turn on your microphone? Yeah, is it now okay? Yeah, you're now okay. Yeah. Uh, the question that I have is.
after all these films came to the cinema theater only after they got a, uh, the certificate so isn't there a flaw there also there's a big flaw sir every year bollywood alone produces close to 17 1800 movies and now you have a list of people who are part of this so called team which reviews these movies um yes. it's it's uh, what is the seriousness of these individuals what is the competence of these individuals how much time they are able to devote to this activity and and whether uh, these uh, these so called uh, uh, sansa uh, board members who review the movies uh, have the right intent or uh, or they can be uh, they can be biased or they can be impelled into taking decisions these are all up in the air so uh, 17 hit yeah, 100 movies a lot of movies uh, i don't know really if this is being taken taken very seriously i don't believe that we have the best possible industry standard when it comes to censorship in our country right okay um, jagdish uh, or ramesh uh, you <coughs> okay uh, professor sharma ji i have a question <clears throat> what made you think of writing this book and do this analysis on this uh, <coughs> uh way bollywood is behaving can you just tell us a little bit of that background what interested you to take up this topic jagdish ji jagdish ji i have always been interested in movies uh, but i'll tell you something how this happened is when your children start to grow you start to think about all of these things even more deeply and in a more profound manner my mother uh i have the fortune of living uh, with my mother and with my family my mother used to watch a television show sir and that television show uh i'm talking this i'm talking about 8 or 9 years ago that television show was a very very popular show it had many contestants in it and what happened was they um uh, one of the contestants was brought in from uh, a north american background uh this uh, individual was a pornographic star and was brought on national television uh, uh, on the prime time at 9 pm uh what i started thinking was how could this happen at at the prime time when everybody is out there watching and what are we trying what is the message that we are sending uh somewhere along that show one of the bollywood producer also joins that show and signs up this particular pornographic star now mm. sir i have nothing i have no objections as to what happens and personally to no nothing to say um in a north american mm. setting uh the person any person who does pornography does their own job they make millions of dollars they do their own thing but they are never in the mainstream particularly this particular individual too was doing very well in pornography business abroad but was never on jay leno was never on uh, you know dan rathers never on 60 minutes never on charlie rose uh, never on david letterman uh, never on jimmy kimmel so these are the top shows they were never there so the point i'm trying to make is that um, uh, in the north american system it's all right this is an industry but it's not part of the mainstream in india what we did we brought it to the mainstream and that's what really made me start writing about this subject so you can read my articles it's not new i have been writing about this thing from 2014 onwards continuously every single year all those articles are available in the free space so what do you do when you do something of that nature when a top movie director producer picks up an individual from a 9 pm show uh, who has no sort of um, a uh, background in movies uh, the movies the kind of movies that we make what does this show this tells my youth that this too is an option which means if you make enough noise if you create a scandal and if you make enough money you will have people standing by you and everything else is forgotten and the traditional path of hard work or going to film school or going to a a, a movie making academy or learning the art learning the craft going through the uh, the theater is a path for suckers it's not a path for 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 individuals if you send that message to my youth my youth gets impacted and that's what motivated me 
to start writing this book. So, Professor Sharma and, and Dr. Swami, there is also a question for you in this. You talked yeah. about the uh, Board of Censors. The Board of Censors is not a quote unquote a legal body, right? It's just an assumed amalgamation of people. They have no teeth. They just, I mean, they just issue a certificate which has. I don't even know if there is any laws behind it. Basically, there aren't any laws or things behind it uh, that back that certificate up. So it's just a bunch of people giving a certificate to a to a movie. Pretty similar to what in America, there is no central board of censors. There's some group that just gives it a rating, okay, at the end of the day. So do you think, is it a cinematographer act that the board of censors is, I mean, I think some money, Swami is telling me it's under the cinematographer act that this board is there, but there is no teeth. Do they have a teeth? Number one. I mean, have you seen any instances of that? Number one. And uh, so so let me go over that and then we can go to the second question. Yeah, they do have teeth. They do have teeth. Uh, okay. They do have teeth. You, 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 okay. you, you, cannot, you cannot release a movie without the certificate. So right. Teeth are there. Are you willing to bite should be the question. Okay. Uh, that's okay. right. Well, uh, I, I, I do know uh, the period when I was a minister, instead of people coming in asking me about exports and imports because I was a commerce minister, I was very often asked how, uh, whether I could recommend them to become member of the center, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, censor board. And uh, in, uh, I couldn't find decent people, so I, in fact, asked Jagdish to <laughs> be a member. Were you a member, no? Of the I was a board? member of yeah, advisory committee under the censor board. The I will explain board. after you finish off. Professor Deer Sharma has finished. Okay. 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 So, uh, but uh, I today know for a fact that a uh, very large uh, portion of the certificates are given by purchase. Mm. That's something that uh, we need. Uh, to rectify by having really eminent people uh, who, who will be members of the board, not somebody whom the INB ministry minister would prefer uh, to nominate. Doctor, the second part is where does freedom of expression stop and abuse start? Either one of you can answer this question because uh, movies, well, art, they express the freedom of expression. So where does it start and stop? Well, let me let me get to the the fundamental reasons of movies. There are two reasons why movies are made, by and large. Hmm. The reason number one is entertainment. Reason number two is a demonstration of mastery in a particular art. These are two broad reasons. Uh, well, individuals uh, are expected to operate fully freely uh, to exhibit the art in whatever form they desire as long as it is not hurting the sentiments of vast majority of individuals. Number two, it is not belittling a vast majority of individuals. Number three, it is not against the law. Number four, it is not promoting uh, a culture which uh, really challenges the foundation or the structures of a society. Uh, this is, I'm speaking from research. So uh, the freedom has caveats. All freedom has caveats. Uh, these are the four caveats uh, under which uh, the, the freedom should be exercised. Uh, the true artist would really not uh, demonstrate an art which would not find uh, a ways of hurting individual sentiment, hurting a society, hurting the traditions, hurting the culture, hurting the, the stability or the equilibrium. Uh, I believe that's getting violated day by day when it comes to Bollywood movies. Okay. In the last question, I can, it's more of a comment from what you made, uh, uh, Dheeraj Ji. Nepotism has taken over the industry to a large extent. So obviously, when you said people who are getting educated in a proper film school or, you know, a director school is going down because nepotism has taken over, at least in, in majority of Bollywood, that's spreading into the other, other uh, places as well. 
but yes we have seen culture come back in certain very small forms like what we are seeing in uh, in kannada film industry or the other industries the non hindi uh, ling- uh, linguistic films have really started to grow i think that is a definitely a threat for bollywood in central in hindi so maybe is that the, i mean you, as you said that's the reason why they're going to quote and quote other audiences that would you know prefer the way that we are showing that show the hindus in a bad light and keep continuing to destroy the culture so i mean i just that's just a comment i just wanted to pass go ahead arun ji you wanted to ask something yeah he is he is the only one who has spoken so far yeah okay uh, there are many other dimensions to this problem that we are discussing today first of all when we say bollywood is killing our culture why identify bollywood alone uh in tamil nadu or south indian film industry is called tollywood we also have uh, uh, industry in uh, northeast we have one very strong industry in bhojpuri uh at one time bengali films bhojpuri films and south indian films used to be so distinguished from hindi film that they used to be bigger hit and they used to get translated converted into hindi now what has happened over period of time take for example bollywood you talked about vulgarity and obscenity i think they start in indian film industry i will not say bollywood film industry they start of vulgarity and obscenity in indian film industry started from bhojpuri at one time they have made such hit films for example even in punjab nanak ram jahaz hai and so on dara singh acted in so many films in punjab and these were religious with a social message now look at the punjab punjabi movies today so we should not segregate bollywood number one number two one very important dimension when we talk about our culture uh, maybe uh, professor sharma was a little hesitant in mentioning this either in the program or in his book because i have not read his book the target is hinduism bollywood is dominated by a large number of uh, rich financiers who are from gulf he mentioned it and these are the people who are supporting islam islamic culture and when he said the stereotypical projection of the muslim collect- uh, characters in the film is because of that number one number two the kind of movies that are made targeting hindi hindu hindu gods i mean can you believe in a country of 80% hindus we have a film like uh, pk and this was a super hit not only in india but even outside india even in china this film was one of the biggest hit and nobody objected people d- did uh, uh, oppose here and there but there was no movement so this uh, the uh, silence of the hindus uh seeing that they are being targeted their gods are being targeted in a in a trend which is you know increasing trend and since they were silent and this trend continued continued with vigor and continued with the more brazen display of vulgarism against hindu gods nudity and obscenity is a different part violence is a different part maybe uh, some of the, the the new platforms that we have today ott in fact if you compare the ott and the the feature film the celluloid you will be surprised the ott is 400% more vulgar and more obscene and uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, when we say supporting porn and uh, people have nothing to say and they don't require a censor certificate they don't require a censor and who uh, appoints the censor board government appoint dr swami is already mentioned who is the president chief president chief is prasun joshi prasun joshi is an mba from imt gaziabad he came to a, a, a film through advertising industry he was an advertising industry copywriter from copywriting he came to the writing the film now one more very important dimension which has not been covered so far is the language of the songs dirty words are used in the hindi film songs you will be surprised the kind of like i mean we have had gopal das neeraj at one point in time writing for the, the, the hindi films we had yogesh 
we had Indivar. I mean, we had such writers in Hindi film industry, Shailendra, and I mean, who have produced films. Uh, I mean, they've written for Sangam, Tisri Kasam, and so on and so forth. I mean, you'll be surprised the kind of literature we used to produce from Hindi film songs. But look at these Hindi film songs today. So when we talk about attack on culture, the language, <coughs> and again, uh, uh, I'm not going to the religion of the songwriters, religion of the producers, or religion of the directors. Now, certainly, there is a, a very strong correlation. If you look at the data, maybe some of the data which uh, Professor Sharma has produced in his book, uh, uh, this dimension also has to be looked into about is there a correlation between the background of the producer, background of the director, and the kind of content that is being produced. Sir, so may I make a comment, sir? Yes. Yes, sure. please go uh, ahead. So the first one, uh, uh, I think, uh, on uh, the topic was on uh, nepotism. Uh, I think more than the word nepotism, I would like to use the word free competition, sir. Hmm. Uh, we have Competition Commission of India, which looks into various aspects of uh, monopoly, duopoly, and other aspects of comparative uh, nature of industry. Now, if Bollywood is an industry, it is certainly anti-competitive in nature. Why? When a big film of a big actor is released, oh, by the way, sir, uh, give or take a few hundred, I can give you the estimate of the uh, screens in India. We have 13 to 14,000 only in India. Uh, 13 to 14,000 ways in which, uh, or screens in which movies can be shown. These are organized screens, which means single screens and multiple screens put together. When a large movie, big movie is released, they block about seven to 8,000 of those screens. So from a competition commission standpoint, from a competitiveness standpoint, that really uh, breeds um, far more impactful nepotism, nepotistic tendencies uh, than generally. So let's view it uh, from unfair competition. That's addressed in my book as well. It's there. Second question, sir, which, uh, which uh, uh, Chaturvedi ji mentioned was on uh, songs. I have a full chapter on it. As a matter of fact, I took um, uh, analysis of songs, sir. Uh, songs really do promote gun violence, objectification of women. I have even analyzed it on attitude towards rape, materialism. And we have found a significant uh, relationship between these outcome variables. Uh, finally, sir, uh, while we, we can picking up Bollywood, uh, there is a reason for it. Uh, I know that there could be vulgarity in other cinema. Bollywood is the most impactful. Even today, people from Bengal, people from Tamil Nadu, people from Kannada industry, people from Punjabi, they want to work in Bollywood. Reverse is not true. You know, there is no aspiration. I mean, people could do a movie in, in Punjab. People could do a Marathi movie. But that's not out of aspiration. That is out of compulsion, probably. So we have come to expect higher standards from Bollywood. Uh, and therefore, we are questioning Bollywood. And uh, uh, on obscenity and all those things, those are, I don't believe they, they, they are, in my view, they're not really the major factors. The major factor is they are uh, really impacting the self-esteem of my youth. They are impacting the Indianness of my youth. They are, please tell me one movie in the last 20 years where they have shown a functional family in which a son is obedient, a mother and father are living together. We are showing dysfunctional families in most of the movies. We have even started to show that single parent families are a norm. Uh, you know, are we really insinuating India is not urban India alone? India is also rural India. And these things don't really happen. So um, the impact is very high, sir. In 1950s and 60s, American government used to use uh, Hollywood movies as a way of creating a yearning for American way of life in Eastern Europe. And sir, with a concerted effort of good 20 to 30 years, they succeeded in creating a yearning in the Eastern Bloc for the Western way of life. Sir, the same was true for India. There was a yearning for Indianness. There was a yearning for Indian way of life. People wanted to be 
people wanted to look like devanand they wanted to be like devanand they wanted to be like raj kapoor in 60s and 70s not so much so so we have come to expect better standards because bollywood was a soft power of india they could have done a great job they could have done a much better job of marketing core indian values core indian traditions core indian festivals the indianness the way we present ourselves in our families the binding elements of our society and i'm sorry that bollywood particularly because we come to have expect high standards from them have not done that and they have actually taken the opposite direction one last question i mean i think uh, arvind raised this question a lot of people in the in the comments are doing it ott how do i mean there is absolutely no regulation today for ott correct arvind if i'm not mistaken uh, no no actually, what do you think i'll, I'll correct you there uh, okay. ott recently came under the information and broadcasting act about 8 9 months ago okay uh, why it has been covered by the information and broadcasting act but i agree with the arvind ji that it is not working I mean, calm. Yeah, there is no, there's no regulation. There is no there regulation. There is no regulation. But it has come under the uh, information. Only self-regulation is there. Uh, because but the content many, there is. But Go many ahead. MPs, many MPs, including from the ruling party, have raised this issue in Parliament, and I am told that the government is seriously considering to, to regulate o- this this platform also. Uh, but I, I have one. You know, how can you do it, sir? It is you see. youtube is not an ott there is enough content available on youtube yeah you uh, cannot control there is there is no regulation and you know in indian society we still are a collectivist society where on television the entire family sits some of our own uh, advertisements i mean just imagine a country sir where the three biggest stars all who all of whom have been given and padma shrees come on television and come and say zuban kesari that have pan masala i mean it's surrogate advertising we know they are not marketing elaichi they are marketing pan masala everybody knows it's not pan masala it's not elaichi where do you go i believe that we must appeal to the hearts of these individuals who we love please straighten your path how much regulation how paternalistic do we want the government to be government cannot be that paternalistic i believe the conscience of these people jo so gaya hai just imagine biggest cricketers of india today come on television and say ke dream 11 pe team banao jungli rami khelo i mean what are you trying to say i have recently written an article how these film celebrities are promoting online gambling you know it is a disaster you know uh, uh, sharma you will be surprised supreme court has ruled that it is not gambling it is a game of skill <laughs> people had gone to the court people had gone to the court this is some more than 25000 crore market and it is open gambling people uh, arvind ji uh, are destroyed but supreme Ar- court says it is Ar- a game of skill it is not Ar- gambling arvind ji no no mai aapko bata raha 25000 crore nahi this recent <laughs> asia cup which took place एक लाख दस हजार करोड़ वन लाख टेन थाउजेंड करोड़ सर गैम्बलिंग टू प्लेस सर लेट मी कोट यू स्टडी सर वेरी रिसेंटली ईडी आर ऑन ईडी डिड अ केस एंड दे फाउंड वन वेबसाइट बेस्ड इन यूके वन सिंगल वेबसाइट फॉर गैम्बलिंग वन सेवनटीन हंड्रेड अकाउंट ओरिजिनेटिंग फ्रॉम इंडिया गैम्बलिंग ऑन क्रिकेट 1700 accounts what is the total number sir 1 lakh 10000 crores 1 lakh 10000 crores Amazing. can you imagine and when the biggest cricket names come on television unscrupulously and say aao aaj team banao sir kya expect kar sakte hain hum desh se not only that even even the bollywood people like shahrukh khan is promoting that uh, a2 a23 or some such thing there is no other platform write another book on how we can uh, rectify all this yes not only we that, have to write one we, very we important have to, thing sir, one very have important thing book is the ji, name of the arvind ji we'll have to write a book staff. we'll have to write a book reset reset yes. swami's book reset <laughs> bollywood <laughs> arvind chaturvedi before you wind up the program i have a very 
question, a big question for Dr. Swami and Dhiraj Sharma ji. My question is, Dr. Swami, you have been in the forefront that Bollywood is financed by the mafia, the yeah. Dubai connection, the underworld yeah. and all that. Could you tell our viewers something on this also? <clears throat> no, you see, the thing is that everything is done by cash in, uh, in Bollywood. And uh, so there, there, there are no, no, hardly any checks are issued except perhaps in terms of payment of uh, their uh, dues for the actresses and actors. But, uh, you know, all the uh, hiring, all the uh, materials, uh, etc. There the cash is uh, freely available in Dubai. And uh, they Dubai also finances them. And I'm sure I think they, they have a particularly a bias for, for a particular religious community, which I shall not name. And uh, consequently, you're seeing that that is that is showing itself up in the uh, in the uh, in the in the Bollywood uh, film filmdom itself. There have been people with uh, with Hindu names, and now they have uh, converted because uh, you know it makes it easier for them to be actors. This is the kind of thing that is been going on, and uh, so. Uh, Dubai, they are all criminals and uh, they do hafta, they do hawala, they do so many things. People who get uh, bribes in this in our country, they use the uh, Dubai people to uh, convert it into dollars and then they deposit it in some numbered account abroad. So that, uh, so it, it, this is what I was uh, mentioning about the uh, the dubai influence sir if i if i want to use your platform to relay another very big concern yes uh, recently a lot of the mm. movies uh, which have not really done that well in india somehow are giving humongous figures coming out of china and also oh. out of turkey and uh, some other foreign countries now if those numbers are to be believed and our study, I have an ongoing study on this, by the way, sir. I'll be able to share that study after I publish it in another maybe month's time. Uh, when you have a number, let us imagine, let's take a hypothetical scenario that there is a movie called uh, XYZ, which they say has done 500 crore business in China. Uh, and then that 500 crore money, because of the money that has earned in China, is, is now sent to India. Uh, to a particular NGO or to a particular production house or to a particular ombudsman or an advocacy group? Uh, or could it not be, uh, you know, uh, uh, funding for anti-India activities? Could it not be funding for terror? Because now there is no way to ascertain whether that movie really made 500 crores in that country. Um, there is no way to ascertain. But the 500 crore money has come to India. How it has come, for what purpose it has come. So I believe that going forward, researchers must examine uh, the foreign earnings of the movies and how they are brought to India. Uh, and could they be linked to anti-India uh, uh, terrorism, terror activities and other activities also as a topic for exploration for future researchers? Sure. Absolutely. And in, uh, I, I would also add in a, uh, in a short comment that the Hindi spoken in uh, uh, in uh, the Hindi movies is deteriorating to uh, two thirds English and uh, one third Hindi. And that in that one third Hindi also there probably ten, uh, Sanskrit words must be maybe two percent or three percent only. Absolutely. Sir, uh, in the other day, Dr. Swami and uh, Ramesh is also here. In, in Hindi uh, Bollywood films, the Tamil Nadu characters are originating from Tamil Nadu or Madras. They are called Madrasi. They are shown as comedians. And yes. uh, the language they speak, uh, uh, the, 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 the Hindi version which they speak, is basically the purpose is to show them as comedians. Yes. That's right. so they make fun of Madrasis. I mean, yes, this is one thing which is very the, the objectionable. Flag bearer, the, the flag bearers of, uh, of various religion and various are uh, the priests. How do yes. we project the priests, sir? It's in my I book. Know. 
the priest is always shown as a person who you could give 500 rupees and change a marriage date yeah have you ever <laughs> seen a priest who has been uh-huh. properly represented in indian movie in bollywood movie sir what to talk about priest when we have bhagwan shiv lord shiva walking on the streets and people are making fun of lord shiva that is been in pk and he could survive in indian uh, in, in india with 80% hindus i mean i'm sir, i'm ashamed of this sir wo kyunki hamare our youth hamare youth ko kar diya na our youth has now been we are at a real peril youth studies are needed we need a systematic program i uh, implore i beseech sir actually i beseech uh, dr swami to please lead the way in conducting more youth studies to really alter the way our youth is thinking we are in a real battle arvin arvin before you wind up just information of the viewers virat hindustan sangam stage dramas in pune and surrounding area bina yeah, yeah, yeah. pk Yeah. yeah, we are okay. Yeah, yeah. ABVP also supported it, and ISKCON uh, volunteers participated. Bina PK, we showed yeah. how illogical was PK, just for the benefit yeah, yeah, of the viewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Arvind, yeah. you may wind up. Okay, just wrap, uh, one more uh, comment I would like to make. There was a time when Muslim actors and actresses. thought that since the population of watching hindi film is more than 85% hindu the muslim names will not be hit yusuf khan became dilip kumar mehjimi became meena kumari even that villain ajit had a muslim original name i mean these people were they thinking that muslim names will not be hit and look at now the entire bollywood is hindu phobic and they are targeting and very silently now the movement has come few two days back jagdish in mumbai uh, up chief minister uh, yogi adityanath was there and he was to meet uh, the uh, uh, people from the film fraternity because he is starting a film city in up and only one person your uh, same surname uh, sunil shetty sunil shetty raised this issue with yogi adityanath that please avoid the boycott bollywood he, he can do this and then he said the kind of work that you are doing i think the boycott is the only solution and when the complete boycott will take place as a movement uh, i think then only the bollywood will actually improve and they will learn some true lesson thank you okay. thank you dr swami it was such an important issue uh professor sharma has raised uh, one very important issue though we could not uh, discuss because the time was short he talked about surrogate advertising in fact uh, if we look at the advertising industry this where i started my career uh, surrogate advertising you have in the name of backpiper which is a brand name of whiskey you have the playing cards and you have the the small crockery and <laughs> and, and it, television is showing and we are hypocrite <laughs> saying that on television cigarette and shar- sharab ka advertising nahi hoga but actually by surrogate advertising you can do that are sir i mean that sabko pata hai sir sabko pata hai everybody knows officer choice is not a rule ke liye kya matlab hai why is this i'm saying it is hypocrisy is the open hypocrisy we have a rule that cigarette and sharab cannot be advertised which made for each other fashion show can be done sir. but cigarette cannot be advertised by the same name i mean isn't it hypocrisy but anyway there are so many right. issues uh, because of short of time uh, we cannot discuss all that issues you talked about uh, sensor boards effectiveness there have been some cases for that alauddin khilji fil- film or that ram leela uh, ram leela film where the name was also changed under the pressure so if if they want they can show some uh, effectiveness uh, sensor board has done it in the past but only thing is uh, the political will is required Uh, professor sharma your uh, research really shows uh, the there are certain uh, the the areas which we need to protest and stop if we don't do that this will further aggravate and it will harm the culture uh, ott is of course another danger and uh, we maybe we can have another program especially 
on OTT and uh, related issues. Thank you, Dr. Swami. Thank you, Professor Sharma, Jagdish Shetri Ji, Ramesh Swami. I thank the technical team led by Ashish Shetty, Gadgi Rakesh, Swami Nathan, Tejas Navalgul, Vishal Mehta, Ajesh, Swami Nathan. Thank you very much. We'll be meeting again next, next Sunday, 15th of January, with another program and 183rd episode of Words of Wisdom Gyan Ganga. Till then, Namaskar. Jai. Namaste. Jai.